Hi, so uh, this is my uh, third tutorial, and uh, today we will be solving you know some randomly selected problems. Uh, let me start with this problem. Mm, so problem six, because I have solved uh, uh, five problems uh, before. Uh, so that in the general linear regression situation with a beta naught term in the model, the correlation between the vector E and y is uh, 1 minus r square square root of this okay uh, this is sort of uh, you know theoretical problem but uh, this has some implication we'll come to that point later on so the first uh, part says that you know you find the correlation between the vector E. So, this E is the residual vector and uh, Y is observed response okay? and we have to find the correlation between E and Y and we have to prove that that is square root of 1 minus R square where R square is the coefficient of multiple determination. Uh, so, we know that this r square is equal to uh, SS regression by SS total. So, this r square uh, parameter it uh, sort of measure the um, proportion of variability uh, in y that is explained by the model. Okay. So, uh, let me solve the first part A, the correlation between E and y. Okay. So, the correlation between correlation between E and y Uh, that is nothing but summation E i minus E bar into y i minus y bar by summation E i minus E bar square into y i minus y bar square and the square root of the whole thing. So, we have to prove that this is equal to 1 minus r square okay, where r square is s s regression by S S total. Okay, not so easy. Okay, so we can start with uh, this numerator uh, E i minus E bar y i minus y bar i is from one to n. Okay. So, can I write this one as just E i into y i minus y bar, because of the fact that uh, E bar is equal to 0, if beta naught is in the model, because uh, if beta naught is in the model, then uh, while differentiating the least square function s with respect to beta naught, we get summation E i equal to 0 and from there it is E bar is equal to 0. Okay? 
So we can write uh, this is equal to uh, EI into YI minus Y bar. I is from 1 to N. And uh, this can be written again, this can be written as EI yi i is from 1 to n because you know uh, this summation ei is equal to 0 right so in matrix notation this can be uh, in vector notation it can this can be written as e prime y or y prime e okay Anyway, now what is E prime y? Can I write this as uh, E prime E? Uh, it is not trivial, so we need to check this part whether this is equal to E prime E. Okay. Uh, so, let me start with uh, E prime E and then I will prove that E prime E is equal to E prime Y. So, before that uh, let me recall the multi, uh, multiple linear regression model Y equal to X beta plus epsilon and here we know that the parameter beta is estimated by beta hat which is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y right and uh, then the fitted model is y hat is equal to x beta hat right this is the fitted model and we know that beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. So, I can write this one as x and then I plug the value of beta hat here. So, x prime x inverse x prime y okay. and then I call this matrix uh, I call this h. Okay. We, this is called hat matrix you know we, we know about this h matrix. So, this is called hat matrix because of the fact that. So, finally, what we got is that we. Uh, so, y hat is equal to h y because this hat, mat hat matrix uh, transform y to y hat that is why it is called hat matrix anyway. So, where h is equal to x x prime x inverse x prime. Okay. So, y hat is equal to h y. Now, what is E then? Uh, e is equal to the observed value minus the estimated value. Okay. So, just now we have uh, proved that y hat is equal to h y right. So, this one is equal to uh, i minus h y. So, i is the identity matrix. Okay. I'll, so, <coughs> Now, uh, what I want is that I want to prove this uh, E prime E is equal to E prime Y that is what I want. Now, I have a formula for E in terms of uh, hat matrix. So, let me start now E prime E I can write E prime E is now in terms of hat matrix that is Y prime I minus H prime i minus h y 
and it is known that you know this had matrix is idempotent matrix that means h square is equal to h and then i minus h is also idempotent. So, what I can write is that this is y prime this can be replaced by only i minus h y. Okay. Now, i minus h y is equal to e. So, this is equal to y prime e. So, we have proved that e prime e equal to y prime e. So, what we have proved is that uh, the numerator is equal to e prime e which is equal to e prime e is nothing but summation e i square which is nothing but s s residual. Okay, so, we have proved that the numerator is s s residual okay. and uh, what is this? This is nothing but uh, e prime e right and this one is nothing but y prime I mean this is nothing but s s total in fact. Okay. Uh, let me write down uh, once more here. So, the correlation between we want to find the correlation between E and Y, which is equal to summation E i minus E bar Y i minus Y bar by square root of summation E i minus e bar square y i minus y bar square. And we know that this one is equal to, we prove that this one is equal to uh, e prime e, the numerator is e prime e. And then since e bar is equal to 0, this one is nothing but summation e i square. So, this is again e prime e and this one is nothing but s s total square root of this. Okay. So, this can be written as uh, e prime e by s s total square root and uh, e prime e is nothing but s s residual by s s t okay. and s s residual is nothing but s s total minus s s regression by s s t. So, we are almost done and then this can be written as 1 minus s s regression by s s t. Okay. So, this one is nothing but 1 minus this one is r square. So, 1 minus r square. So, we proved that the correlation between uh, E and Y is uh, square root of 1 minus r square. Okay. So, here is the problem. So, we have solved the part 1 of this problem. And what is the implication of this? The implication of this result is that it is a mistake to attempt to find the defective regressions by a plot of residual E i against the observation Y i as, as this always shows a slope. Okay. So, if you can recall you know once we have a uh, fitted model uh, say y hat is equal to x beta hat. Uh, then what we do is that we compute the residuals and in a, in a topic called model adequacy checking, 
um, we talked about several residual plots okay and the residual plots is sort of uh, to check uh, whether the model assumptions are correct or also to uh, check the goodness of the fit so what we do in the residual plot is that we plot uh, ei residual against yi hat not yi okay so this is the reason why we plot the residual against yi hat not against y because there is a correlation correlation between uh, e i there is a correlation between e and y and uh, the correlation we just proved that it is 1 minus r square uh, square root of that okay so that's why uh, we don't go for uh, plotting e i against y i because there is always a uh, theoretical slope between uh, between them okay since because of this correlation now so it's the second part says that uh, so that this slope is 1 minus r square okay uh, what is the meaning of this one is that if you fit a linear relationship between e and y the slope is going to be 1 minus r square in that uh, uh, linear fit. Okay. So, now let me uh, fit uh, a relation between uh, E and y. Suppose the relation is a, is a straight line relation. So, E is equal to say A plus B y. Okay. So, what I have to do is that I have to prove that this b is equal to 1 minus r square, the slope is 1 minus r square, this is part b. Okay. So, we know what is this b, uh, we know that b is equal to uh, e prime y by y prime y because you know uh, when we fit uh, like y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x we know that beta 1 is nothing but s x y by s x x. So, similar to that uh, so x y is nothing but x prime y and then x prime x. So, this has been uh, followed from here. Okay. Now, e prime y is just now we proved that e prime y can be written as e prime e. So, by y prime y. So, e prime o e is nothing but s s residual by y prime y is s s total. So, this one is nothing but uh, s s total minus s s regression by s s total. So, this is nothing but 1 minus s s regression by s s total which is equal to 1 minus r. So, the slope the b we have proved that this is 1 minus r square and the third part of this question is that. So, further that the correlation between E and y hat is equal to 0. See in the residual plot we plot E against y i y hat because their correlation is 0. Okay. Uh, we have to prove that now maybe I have proved this in the during the class also anyway. Uh, so, <coughs> the correlation between part c uh, between E and y hat and uh, this one is equal to. So, first we will start with uh, summation E i minus E bar 
into y i hat minus y hat bar. Okay. Well, now <coughs> e e e bar is equal to zero. So uh, this can be written as this can be written as uh, e prime y hat. Okay. And uh, we know that y hat is uh, equal to h y and also we know that e is equal to 1 minus h sorry i minus h y. Just now we proved. Uh, these two things. Now, if I plug uh, these two values here, what I will get is that um, my e prime y hat is equal to e prime. So, y prime i minus h and y hat that is h y. So, this is equal to y prime h minus h square into y. Now, see this uh, uh, h is a Hadamard matrix. So, h square sorry uh, idempotent, idempotent matrix. So, h square is equal to h. So, that is why this is equal to 0. So, the correlation you can you can see the covariance is equal to 0. So, the correlation is so the, co the numerator this is the numerator of this correlation expression. So, the correlation between E y hat is equal to 0 because of this fact. Okay. So, we are done with the first problem. Uh, let me prove one more uh, problem which is uh, again you no know, theoretical and call it problem 7. Okay. Uh, this problem says that uh, you have to prove the coefficient of determination is equal to the square of the correlation between y and y hat. Okay. So, what you have to prove here is that you have to prove that the correlation between y and y hat and the square of this one is equal to r square. r square is again the coefficient of determination which is equal to s s regression by s s total. Okay. So, it is uh, nice to prove this one. Uh, okay. Let me write down that what is r, this correlation I will use the notation r y y hat. This is the correlation between y and y hat which is equal to summation y i minus y bar into y i hat minus y hat bar you can write, but these two are same by uh, summation y i minus y bar square summation y i hat minus y bar. Uh, Yes, I, I hope you understand that y y bar is equal to y hat bar. This is the observed mean of the observed value and this is the mean of the estimated value. You know that E i is equal to summation E i is equal to 0 
for a model with uh, intercept and then E i is nothing but y i minus y i hat. So, this says that y i summation y i is equal to some y i hat and then of course, y bar is equal to y hat bar anyway. So, this square and the square root of this. Okay. Uh, now, this can be uh, this y i can be written as uh, we know that this y i is equal to y i hat plus the residual E i right. So, if I put that uh, expression here, uh, what I will get is that I will get uh, y i hat minus y bar into y i hat minus y bar, because this is nothing but y bar only plus I have extra term here because of this plus e i. So, plus y i hat minus y bar into e i. and uh, the denominator is the same uh, let me write down that uh, this is y i minus y bar square sum y i hat minus y bar square okay now what about this one? Is this uh, 0? Yes, just now we have proved that the correlation between uh, E and Y is equal to 0. So, this is the covariance between E and Y, sorry, E and Y hat. Just now we have proved that in the previous uh, uh, problem, we have proved that the correlation between E and y hat is 0. That means, the covariance between E and y hat is equal to 0. So, this term is going to be equal to 0. So, what we are left with is that then the correlation this r y y hat is equal to uh, some y i hat minus y bar square by this. Okay. So, I can write this one as summation y i minus y bar square and the square root of the whole thing. Okay. Is it clear? Because this one is just I am writing square and then you can cancel out. Okay. So, r y y hat is equal to this one and this one is equal to the numerator is S s regression and the denominator is S s total. So, what I got is that this is equal to r square. So, that is what you have to prove that the correlation between the square of the correlation between y y hat. So, what you got is that r y y hat square is equal to r square. This is what uh, we wanted to prove. Okay. Uh, so, next uh, we will consider the, a practical problem. And uh, uh, this problem is uh, uh, involving orthogonal polynomial, I mean a polynomial fitting using uh, 
uh, orthogonal polynomial. So, here in this problem we will sort of explain you know how to um, how to decide about the degree of uh, decide about the order of the polynomial right. So, here uh, the problem is that uh, new born baby was weighted weekly and 20 such weights are shown below. Uh, so, this is the first week the baby has weight uh, 141 ounce okay. and similarly for 20 weeks the data are given and uh, if you plot us if you if you draw scatter plot for this one I am sure that you are you are going to have a nonlinear pattern maybe. So, you fit to the data using orthogonal polynomials a polynomial model of degree justified by the accuracy of the figures. Okay, so, the degree is not given. So, you have to decide about the degree of the uh, polynomial you are going to fit here. Okay. Uh, so, we will sort of uh, follow the uh, that uh, we talked about how to decide about the degree uh, while uh, while talking about uh, orthogonal polynomial fitting or polynomial fitting. So, you start with the linear model and then next you fit a polynomial of order 2 and then you see the significance of beta 2 that is the coefficient of x square. If beta 2 is significant then only you go for third order polynomial, but if you see the beta 2 is not significant uh, then first order polynomial first order model is enough, but if beta 2 is significant then you go for third order polynomial. Uh, again you have to test the significance of beta 3. Uh, if beta 3 is significant then you go for fourth degree polynomial, if it is not significant you stop at second degree polynomial something like that. Okay. So, here this problem sort of you know uh, give idea about how to how to decide about the de uh, order of the polynomial. Okay. So, let me recall a little bit uh, what is polynomial model. So, we wish to fit the model say y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta k x to the power of k plus epsilon. And what we learned there is that you know instead of fitting this model there are several advantage if we go for uh, polynomial fitting using orthogonal polynomial. So, instead of fitting this model we fit y equal to okay, I think alpha naught plus alpha 1 p 1 x alpha 2 p 2 x plus alpha k p k x plus epsilon. So, uh, p k x is kth order orthogonal polynomial okay? and of course, they are all orthogonal polynomials. Well, so, we know how to fit uh, this model, we know what are these orthogonal polynomial. If you, you know I uh, please refer my lecture on uh, polynomial fittings uh, for uh, to know more about you know this orthogonal polynomials. Okay, so, what we know is that we know that alpha naught hat is equal to y bar, we know that alpha j hat is equal to p j x i into y i by p 
p j x i square. Okay. So, what I want to say here is that, okay, so by using all this formula, so you know y i and of course, x i's are uh, all you know equally spaced, you can just uh, consider them 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 20 and you know this uh, orthogonal polynomial. So, this is the jth order orthogonal polynomial. So, you can compute beta naught and beta j hat for j equal to 1 to k. Now, let me just write down that also you know that the SS regression due to alpha 1 that is the contribution of the first order term in the polynomial that is equal to alpha 1 hat sum over y i p 1 x i and similarly, S is regression due to alpha 2 is equal to alpha 2 hat sum over i y i p 2 x i for i equal to 1 to n. And similarly, S is regression alpha 3 equal to alpha 3 hat i is from 1 to n y i p 3 x i. Why I am talking about all this uh, SS regression due to alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 is that what uh, you know I feel is that you first uh, given, given the problem you know you have x i y i values right. So, these are the these are the x i y i is values, this is your x i, this is y i. So, given this thing you first compute what is the total variability in the response variable. So, the response variable here is y, so weight and this is x. You compute S s total first uh, to check the variability in y about the mean uh, that is y i minus y bar square. And once you know the total variability, here it is, you can check that this is 26018. So, this is the total variability and I want my model to uh, explain this variability. Now, what I will do is that I will check uh, the S s regression due to alpha 1. So, S s regression due to alpha 1 will give me how much of the total variability in y is explained by the linear term. And similarly, the S s regression due to alpha 2 will give me how much of the total variability is explained by the quadratic term that is by uh, beta 2 or alpha 2. And similarly, S s regression due to alpha 3 will give the amount of variability that is explained by the cubic term. Okay. So, uh, you see uh, how much of the variability is explained by alpha 1, how much of the variability is explained by alpha 2 and how much of the variability is explained by alpha 3. If you see that alpha 1 and alpha 2 together they have almost explained uh, major part of the variability in y, then you can stop at the quadratic fit. But if you see that uh, still there are uh, uh, significant part which has not been explained by the quadratic fit, then you can go for cubic term. Okay. So, uh, this is my uh, S s total and I want to one I want my model to explain this variability. Okay. Uh, so, what I will do is that I will compute see I know uh, I am not going into detail of computing all these things. 
So, you can compute alpha 1 hat, you can check that uh, this is equal to uh, yeah you can you can have the computations, you, you can check that this S s regression is equal to due to alpha 1 is very large this is 25438.75 and S s regression due to alpha 2 is 489.00 and S s regression due to alpha 3 is 1.15 and let me repeat that S s total that is y i minus y bar the variability in the response variable about mean is equal to 26018. So, you can see this is the total variability and the first order term or the linear term has already been explained has already explained major part of this total variability and alpha 2 is also significant uh, this is 489 and what you can do is that you know see you can now uh, make a ANOVA table uh, let me uh, do that. So, ANOVA table okay, source degree of freedom S s M s and F. Uh, so, regression due to alpha 1, regression due to alpha 2, regression due to alpha 3 and say residual and then total. The total S s we computed that this is 26018 and S s regression is due to alpha 1 is uh, 25438.75, S s regression due to alpha 2 is 489 and S s regression due to alpha 3 is 1.15 and uh, you can check that the S s residual is uh, just uh, 89.30 and the degree of freedom for this one is 1, this one is 1, this one is 1 and uh, the total degree of freedom is 19 because there are 20 observations and then the residual degree of freedom is 16. So, you can compute the M s value M s residual is 5.58 and this value will be will remain same okay, 25,438.75, Well, now see of course, you know, <coughs> in the A value, A value you can check that this by this that is going to be 4558.92. And uh, a value for alpha 2 is this by this that is uh, 87.63 and the a value for alpha 3 is 0 0.21 and this all uh, this a follows uh, has degree of freedom 1 16 and now you check the tabulated value of uh, 0 0.05116 that is equal to 4.49. So, you can see that this one is much larger than the tabulated value, this one is also much larger than the tabulated value, but this one is smaller than 4.49. The meaning of this one is that uh, alpha 1 is significant, alpha 2 is also significant because the F value uh, observed F value is greater than the tabulated F value. 
and this table says that alpha 3 is not significant. That means, you can go for a quadratic fit. So, the final fit in terms of x is 136.227 plus 2.68 x plus 0 0.167 x square. Okay, so, that you can check, but what I want to say is that this is my total variability and I want to explain I want to want I want my model to explain this variability. Now, you can see that this linear term explain say huge part of the total variability, the quadratic term explain this much of total variability and the cubic term is not significant right and now we can see that you know out of 26000 of the total variability major part has been already been explained by the model and the remaining part is 89.30 so i can go for a quadratic fit but here just i want to say suppose your cubic term is not significant, but still cubic term is not significant, but this residual is still reasonably high. Then you can go for alpha 4. See alpha 3 might not be significant, but alpha 4 could be significant. I mean I feel so. So, in that case you can go for a model with linear term, quadratic term and the fourth degree, but not the third degree. So, it depends on how small the residual is. If the residual is reasonably small, then you do not need to go for the higher order polynomial, but uh, somehow I feel that you know uh, even if the third degree, if, even if the cubic term is not significant, uh, it might happen that the fourth degree term is significant but you have to go for the fourth degree term, uh, fourth degree polynomial only if the residual part is large otherwise you know uh, just forget about that you go for the quadratic fit okay so uh, this is uh, the problem we talked about uh, from the um, uh, polynomial regression and uh, next uh, let me talk about uh, one more problem uh, this is uh, I do not know what is the number, this might be 8. Okay. <coughs> well, so this problem says that if you are asked to fit a straight line to the data, this given data, what would you say about it? Yeah, I mean, it is sort of. Uh, difficult <coughs> exactly know what the question is asking for or looking for. Um, so, you are given um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data points and uh, here is the scatter plot for, uh, for the given data. So, this is my x axis, this is my y axis and uh, here uh, do you have anything to say because see here you can see that this particular point that is 6 uh, 4.5 uh, this particular point is not in the usual trend of the data. So, that means uh, some at some point of time you know I talked about uh, uh, influential observation and uh, leverage point. So, this point you know, this 6 uh, 4.5 uh, it uh, seems to be a influential point because, because this one is not in the general trend of the other data. So, 6 4.5 is an 
influential observation right and uh, uh, see if you uh, with this point uh, i mean without this point uh, you can you can think of fitting uh, if you if you fit a model to the remaining data you will get a fit with negative slope so this should be the fitted mod line like right? i mean you, you will get a you will fit a line like this for if you ignore this point right and but if you include this point uh, then uh, your fitted line should be something like uh, this one okay so that is the problem with the influential observation so without the point this uh, 6 this is my 6 uh, 4.5 so without this point the fitted model has negative slope and uh, with this point uh, the fitted model has a uh, uh, positive slope okay so this clearly says that uh, the point 6 4.5 is an influential observation so the recommendation here is that you know if uh, there there exist influential observation uh, uh, very f I mean few influential observation uh, if you can identify uh, an influential observation in the given data maybe you can ignore them uh, if they are not large in number you can ignore them and fit uh, a model for the remaining data and what could have been better here is that you know if so if you see here you know uh, you have data up to 3 and uh, uh, then the next one is 6 so uh, some observations between x equal to 3 and x equal to 6 would be useful here. So, this is also you know you can comment uh, in that way. Okay. So, uh, we solve uh, you know some problems uh, in this tutorial and uh, again in the next tutorial uh, we will solve some randomly selected problems. Uh, now, we need to stop. Thank you.